Yo, what up, everybody? It's your boy, Grandma Goose. Get ready to move on everything. You know to my channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button, all that. You got to talk, y'all. You got to talk. This is the Uncomfortable Truth segment. I know we go places that most people don't want to go. We talk about shit that people don't want to talk about. I want to talk about uh, new age parenting, right? Do y'all got kids? Any of y'all got kids? If you got kids, stick around through this video, please. If you got children, watch this whole entire video today. I ain't going to keep y'all too long. But we got to have some of this conversation. I'm going to save some of it for when I actually do the whole podcast about this. And I want to bring on um a couple of single moms that I know. um, A couple of fathers that I know, single dads, because that exists too. um, And people who, who do, like, they got both the parents in the household. So that we could get a dynamic from each side of the situation. Because all of it's necessary. And a lot of it. Um, a lot of it needs to be discussed, honestly speaking. Um, first, I want to talk about just parenting in 2022 and what I'll be seeing, right? Damn, there's so many ways to take this conversation because I don't even know where to start. I seen something the other day that bothered me a lot. But I'm going to give you a story time real quick, right? Take you back to my childhood. When I was coming up, right? Um, Rest in peace to my mom. You know what I'm saying? May she continue to rest in peace. She did the best job that she possibly could have under the circumstances. You know what I'm saying? My dad is still alive. So, but he, like, he wasn't around. And like be being an adult now, being a grown man, having kids, not being with my baby mom, I kind of understand some of his great. And I know that it wasn't all his fault. He could have made more efforts. We talked on the phone the other day for my birthday. He told me this, that he felt like he hasn't been the greatest dad. He could have did more. But I understand him now. I don't, that's neither here nor there, right? But, so my I basically grew up in a single parent household. I did, me, my brother, and my two sisters, right? Pringles, free Pringles, um, Nay and Ty. So, um, growing up, we lived in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? Best Star at the East New York, shout out Best Star, East New York, Brooklyn all day. Um, And I'm not, I don't want to say like, all right, let me put it to you this way. I would say that my mom was very good at not letting us know we were struggling. You get what I'm saying? As I'm a grown man now, and I look back at it, I feel like, no, not I feel like, fuck what I feel. I think we were struggling. You know what I'm saying? Um. I did have like nice clothes and nice sneakers and shit like that. My mom's knew the knew the people. You know what I'm saying? Back in those and I'm keeping a stack, man. Like, cause we we here for real talk. Uh, uh, back in those days, you could you could know the booster, nigga. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? They probably they was around too when we was coming up. Everybody had a booster, nigga. My mom was just coming up. She had Matt, cause she was a young parent, 14 when she had my brother, 15 when she had me, 17 when she had me. So not only she was a single parent, she was a teenage mom too, who also came from a semi-single parent home. Although my grandmoms did, there was somebody, but it wasn't my mom pops. So like it's, it's layers to this whole entire dynamic. But anyway, we growing up in Brooklyn. I am saying, my mom was new to boosters and all that. So that's how I was able to get the shit that I, like, if I wanted something like a new pair of sneakers or whatever the case may be. But I didn't have, like, a lot. And I'm not trying to say, like, this is no knock to my mom. This is no knock to my parents. They, you do with the information that you got. So they, 
they was only doing the best they could with what they had. And I understand that. Um, a lot of things I didn't get. It's tough when you have a single mom raising four kids. You know what I'm saying? I want to shout out, really shout out my little sister Pops, Talia Pops, because he was there for my little sister. Like, I can't lie about that. He's a good nigga. He was there for my little sister. And he ain't never shit on us neither. Like, and I'm pretty sure through the dynamics and how life works out, that he gave my mom money that she used for us too. That wasn't just for Talia. I'm not, that's just how life works. If my baby mom was to have another kid right now, God forbid, whatever she do, moving forward, like if, she, if I sent her money for my children, I know that there's a possibility that she would be using some of that money for another kid. That's neither here nor there, but I get my drift of what I'm saying, right? So, so Top Pops was, he was a good, he was a good dude. But again, he wasn't in the house with us. Like, so, Whatever. East New York come around. I'm in my teens. I'm about 13, 14. Right, this was my last year junior high. Going in high school. And this is when I, I went outside, though. Right? Junior high school, went through a little bullying and shit like that. But not really, like, it was more like I had to toughen up and shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? I had to. Not a lot of people to say and do certain things no more. You get what I'm saying? So it ain't about being a gangster or none of that kind of stuff. It's more or less about being, like, not letting some shit just rock. You know what I'm saying? To you. So junior high school got me a little bit, like, with the fighting and getting my hands up, all that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? High school high school was, is where it got different. High school is where it got different. East New York is where it got different because then that's when the gangs got introduced to the situation, right? So I was a young, dumb nigga, right? I was. I was a teenager that was in the streets, command crimes. Um, I went to jail a few times. I'm not happy about it. I don't even talk about it on none of my podcasts. I'm only mentioning it because it's a part of my childhood and it's going to all tie into what I'm talking about. But, <laughs> feel me? Um, this, the little six month bed on Records Island for this, not even, I won't call that a bed. That's that's funny. That was, niggas went to jail for real life like that. But it was long enough for me to understand how there was a place that I didn't want to be. Right? All right. So, Fighting, robbing, stealing, whatever, whatever, gang banging, everything as a teenager, right? I feel like, nope, stop that. I feel like, I think if my dad was around, that not necessarily that I wouldn't have done the same things. I can't say that, but I can say that it would have been more structured to the things that I did if I decided to move a certain kind of way. Because when I got older, um, me and my dad could have had those situations where we could have did stuff together and um, he could have led the way and I could have followed. But that's neither here nor there anymore. That's, that's another podcast. But anyway, so coming out of jail, I tried to go back to school, didn't work out. I felt like because I had already been to jail, like what a school, this shit felt like jail, which is also another podcast, <laughs> the the fucking school, the prison pipeline. But that ha that has a lot to do with um, single parent homes and all of that too, because let's say a child um, grows up without dad. A dad keeps structure and discipline, bro. I, I don't understand how many ways that I could try to explain that, but, and I know, and I'm, and I want to shout out to all the strong independent sisters out there, all you women that's doing it on your own. And I totally respect y'all, but y'all have a, um, how do I put this? Y'all have a misconception about your ability to raise good men. It's an uncomfortable truth. I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Tell y'all the truth. Right? I'm not saying that all of these mothers out here is raising fucked up little niggas. I'm not saying that. 
But what I am saying is they raise raising self and emotional men. And let me explain. Because I, I, I was this. I'm speaking about myself, y'all. This is, this is what I love about doing these little one-on-one podcasts where I'm, I'm just talking to y'all as the people because I was speaking about myself. I love to use my personal experiences. I don't use it to generalize. I use it to educate. You know what I'm saying? I, um, I wouldn't say a weak man, but I would say that I wasn't emotionally mature and I didn't know how to handle my emotions. And I thought that because um, my mom was very like, hmm, how do I say this? She had like a attitude, like a very, very attitude. She was a strong, I guess you would say a strong, independent black woman. She was trying to be that. I'll give her that. And um, she had a very, very strong attitude. Like, so... Subconsciously, that would normalize a man accepting a, um, a woman talking to him any kind of way. What do you mean, Grandma? Let me explain to y'all, right? Hold on. Breathe on that for a second. Because if, let's say, it's a household where it's mom and dad, they marry, right? And they have kids, whatever, right? The son grows up and he and he watches his dad work very hard to provide for the family, bestow it in his approach so that he's not really throwing off his son so that he can continue to execute and make things happen for the family. He see how to be emotionally supportive and mature because as the husband, he's going to see that when his mom is sad or when his mom is going through things, how his dad is able to stay centered and be able to help her get through whatever it is that she's going through. And it works vice versa too because men need women for emotional support, for nurturing, for things of that nature too, for keeping the household together, for a lot of different things, bro. I understand that it's not like a a one side or another side kind of thing. I ain't on it like that. That's not my approach here. Which I cannot say, honestly speaking, that it don't make a difference when both parents are in the home. Because, all right, let's talk about this. What's going on right now in our community? Let's talk about it. We got there's a lot of reasons behind this too. This is not just the parenting, but parenting has a lot to do with it. <laughs> Forgive me, smoking. We got the um the gangsters. Gang, gang, gang. And we got the um the bad John, bad B word, I want to call women. You know what I'm saying? Bad bitches, all that. We got The, the scammers, we got the we got the, the young niggas that's going around just terrorizing the neighborhood for no reason. We got the squares that don't want to be a part of none of that shit, but they sucked into it because they don't have a choice because they getting picked on and violated if they're not a part of either one just for trying to be regular because they being looked at as because they oh they think they better or trying to be something different. Um, we got so much things wrong with our community and and let's be honest um when i was coming up right um i said this in my last podcast but this is very true i know y'all heard the statement yo it takes a community to raise a child right because it does when i was covered up the whole hood would snatch you up if you was doing some wild shit bro you was running around terrorizing the neighborhood. I'm not going to say, like, nah, I can't say that. Some niggas was getting away with doing the same shit. A lot of people was doing X, Y, Z. But you got to think about the dynamics of why that was even going on, bro. They been started this shit from those times on, right? People were selling uh, drugs, all of that. This was that era. Transit, all right, so boom. 
This is when it started happening. The 60s was when it started happening. This is when the welfare came around. This is when they started incentivizing single moms to to not have to have the dad in the crib because they'd be able to receive benefits if they just had a child and dad didn't have to be there. But then dad had to pay child support, right? Boom. 70s and 80s drugs come around. They put them in the inner city neighborhoods and one or two things happen. Either you got hooked on them or you started selling them shits, right? Boom. And it was mostly the men. And the women was the ones, now nah, I'm not going to say that. It was mostly the men selling it and going to jail and killing each other over it with the money and all that kind of shit, right? So, boom, for two decades, you do that. And then in the 90s, they come with the crime bill, which gave people mandatory minimum sentences for drugs, right? That happens. And then that takes away another generation of men out the home, right? All of these kids coming up in the 90s, most of them grew up without their fathers, I'm telling you, because I, I, mine was around, but wasn't. And so you got that. So you got that being now normalized because it's been incentivized for women to have kids without the dad being around. Women have been shown over and over and over and, and falsely told that they actually don't need a man in the house. So it's been pushed, it's been pushed, and it's happening right now, live action. So that's what we have going on right now. Um, two generations of men, three generations of men out of the home, right? So now the men come home from jail to try to get um back into the neighborhood with the, now the kids that's coming up after two generations of not having no men around to snatch them up when they was doing some wild show to bring them to their mother or, or to go get their son off the streets. So it's leading to like all of the shit that we going through right now in our community. It was my son, my son, um, I think like two years ago, and even last year, I think it was, um, it was some kids or a kid or two trying to bully him on the bus. Um, so I did the responsible adult thing. I'm like, let me see the parent, try to talk to the parent, this, that, the third. Did that, nipped it in the bud the first time. But that's because, and I know this is going to sound, oh, he just trying to, no, but it's true. Both of the parents was there, the mom and the dad, bro. And, but see, the mom came with smoke, which is, this is how I always usually go, which is another, oh, man, so late to the shit. But the mom came with, with smoke. And I'm like, whoa, chill. I just want to call at you because your child is probably in my child. Before it becomes a big thing, maybe you could just talk to your child, tell them like, this is not the way to go about being around other kids. You know what I'm saying? So they being socially awkward. It's a lot of socially awkward kids. And that comes from bad parenting. I'm sorry. I'm blaming y'all. It's not. It's the, it's the parents blaming y'all. But. Anyway, so one of so one of the situations went like that. Both the parents there be able to have a conversation. They talk to their child. Doesn't happen again. Next situation, ratchet ass single mother, respectfully, because she was. I, 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 all that. I'm like, listen. Tell your daughter, your son, both of them, whoever. Don't say nothing to my kid. Straight like that. We don't got to be all of this, ah, la, 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 oh, I'll do this, oh, somebody touch my kid and this and that. Y'all be fake gangsters and stuff. Could knock it off. You, you by yourself, sweetheart. You're not going to punch no man in the face. You're not going to do that. Y'all be y'all be doing a lot. Knock it off, right? But that's the chicks that was raised. You could tell, bro, they was raised without their pops too because they don't know how to interact with a man. They don't know how to have a conversation with a man. If she, if she, if her, if her dad was around, he was a, a good dad. She would respect the 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 dynamic of a man and a woman conversation. Real men and women know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that, bro. You know why men don't say certain shit to other men? Because men are confrontational, very much so. If you say certain shit to the wrong man, it's going to be an issue. It's going to go down. It's it's, it's going to it's going to be hard to communicate it. 
You get what I'm saying? Women are different, though. They're non-confrontational, but they always have a lot to say. And that's how things go left, because then they'll bring other people into the situation, and then it'll be a big whole thing when there was really just one girl talking out of her mouth, but she could have just been a responsible adult and had a conversation and checked her little badass kids. You get what I'm trying to say? But that's because probably how she was raised and how her mom was raised. And when you talk to these to, to these to these single mothers, which is why I want to get them on the show, is because they a lot of them will tell you that they grew up without their dad too. The ones that grew up with their dad that became single moms, I feel like you could tell because their baby fathers, whether they're not together or not, those baby fathers usually stick around and take care of their kids because they at least picked a good man. I got two sons, and um, I'm I'm gonna always stick around in their life, whether I I fuck with my baby mom or not, because I know what it's like to, like I said, to grow up with your dad being alive and well and not being there really. Yet. You know what I'm saying? And. My dad put in his work in his day, so he was very much respected in the streets, and his name is what it is. So, yes, he would have been able to come and into my life and, and authority, and I would have had to respect it like, like other people did because the, he was a respected person or is. So I can't. I'm not going to be less than that for my sons. I'm going to be the example for them. I'm going to set the example for them, me. I'm going to show them, like, even if it don't work out between the mom, that I'm going to have to stick around no matter what to be a part of their life. Because we, cause, cause it's it's really some degenerative kids being raised down here. That's the word. Like, I like to call them degenerative. Like, they, they, they fucked up. They fucked up. They get sent to school. Look, oh, man, it's there to this conversation. Stop sending your kids to school looking crazy, too. I'm saying that, too. I'm saying that. Yeah, I am. Stop doing that. Y'all be looking good. I be seeing y'all ladies. Y'all hair be done. Y'all nails be done. Eyebrows, lashes, everything on, on fleek, like y'all used to say. I know that shit probably out of, that, out of date, but I don't give a fuck. Y'all should be laced. Laced. And y'all sending y'all kids to school looking crazy. I take my kid to the bus stop every morning, and I pick them up every afternoon. I see what these kids be looking like. You can't be no bad bitch if your kid looking like a dusty little dust little dust bunny. You're not a bad bitch. You're not. You're a bad mom. And. You made a, a messed up choice for a baby father because he not holding you accountable to make his kids look a certain way and then providing the stuff he want them to wear too. Cause niggas don't get it twisted. I'm coming at men too. Cause y'all be having shit to say to y'all baby moms, but y'all don't be having, y'all don't be having the, the provision. You can't talk if you can't talk if you can't pay up, nigga. You can't tell her what the kids can have on if you don't buy the clothes, nigga. You can't tell her I want my kid looking like this if you don't kick out money for what you want them to look like. I'm calling y'all out too, man, fellas. It's not just the ladies. It's both It's both parties. Everybody need to get this shit together. If you, if, all right, you know what? That's another one. <laughs> Yo, this shit is deep. This conversation is too deep. There's so many ways to take it. It really is. It really is. Keep making terrible choices as a, as, as a collective. And our kids are the products of it. We products of terrible choices by our parents. And it's a vicious cycle. Just the truth.
Some of y'all ladies need to get y'all shit together. And a lot of y'all niggas need to get y'all shit together. Stop having babies by girls you don't want to be with. Ladies, stop opening up to le your legs to niggas that you don't see yourself having children with because it's a possibility. You control whether or not a baby's born. I'm just saying. We got to do better as a community. I ain't, I don't, this is, this is, I see this shit going on every day. I'm, my, my kids, are, they growing up in a single parent home right now. Only, I'm around, I'm going to be in their life, but <coughs> they literally going to do that right now. And you can't tell me it's not the difference between how, how a woman raises a man and how a man raises a man. And even the raises the daughter because one, it teaches her that she don't have to really she have to respect men, but she she gotta move a certain way too in order to garner the love that she requires from them. Cause a father love for his kids, like a mother love is unconditional too. Don't get it twisted. But it gotta be some type of balance. I challenge all the fathers out there to have a relationship with your kids. They the future. They the next up. They next up. You see what this fucking generation is doing right now. This shit is in the toilet. Our kids is next up. Ours. How you raising yours? You out here every weekend and partying and drugged up and doing all of this shit and your kids looking like shit? That's you? You out here blowing all this money, acting like you got it living above your means and, 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 and struggling to pay bills and rent? That's you? You got it. Every new fucking sneaker that come out. But your but your investment portfolio is at zero or you don't got a thousand dollars in savings. Is that you? You got mad different spirits in you from the multiple people that you've been with. So you don't know how to pair bond with your own children. Is that you? You got to do better. I'm coming back with the game to really talk about this shit. Single mothers, if y'all want to tap in and pull up, this conversation ain't done. It's grandma. I'm out. Subscribe to my channel.